What's up everyone, welcome to part 4 of our YOLO tutorial series and in this one I'm going to show you how to use YOLO in real time with a camera. So what you see here is live video from a webcam and I've laid out a bunch of objects in its field of view so it can detect it. So for the most part it does a pretty good job. You can see the, the cell phone, it does a good job and detects that correctly, the scissors, the mouse, um, and the cup, it's detecting them correctly with fairly high confidence, but some of them it's having trouble with. For example, this yellow um, ethernet cable, you can see here, it thinks it's a banana, and the little cat figurine, it thinks it's a clock. Sometimes it thinks it's a mouse or a spoon, and it's not getting the fidget spinner. It sometimes thinks it's a scissors so or a cell phone. And my wallet, it thinks it's a cell phone. But anyways, it's doing a pretty good job. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get all this set up with your webcam. So let's get started. So I've gone ahead and created a new Python file and placed it in the darkflow-master directory. And I've got it open up in Atom. So since a lot of this code is going to be the same as in the previous video, I'm going to try and move through it kind of fast and copy and paste the stuff that we've already seen and just highlight the stuff that we've made changes to. So starting with our imports, we're going to be importing CV2 and we're going to be importing from darkflow.net.build. We're going to be importing tfnet, then numpy as np and time. So no change to the imports. Then we're going to create our options dictionary. So options is going to be, we're going to specify the model and it's going to be the same yolo.cfg model and the same weights, yolo.weights. And I increase the threshold slightly. This is a parameter you can play with. As you increase it, you're going to get less boxes and as you lower it, you'll get more boxes. And then GPU, we'll set it to 1.0. So we use the GPU to run our model. And just a side note, I did try a different model out as well. So I tried the tiny-yolo-voc. And with this model, you can run, you'll get about, for me, I got double the frame rate. So with this regular YOLO model, I was getting 15 to 20 frames per second with 1080p video. But with the tiny YOLO-voc, I was getting double that. So 30 to 40 frames per second. It's trained on less objects, so it can't detect as many objects, but if speed is a problem and you need something a little bit quicker, go with the tiny YOLO-VOC model. Just download the weights from the same site that we downloaded the other weights from. Cool, so moving on, we're going to do the same. Um, we're gonna create that tfnet object. So tfnet is going to be equal to tfnet, and then we're gonna pass the options. Then we're going to create our random array of colors or a random list of colors. So colors is going to be some tuple and it's going to be 255 times some array of random numbers. So three items in the array and we're going to multiply it by 255 and then we're going to do a list comprehension. So we get 10 of those colors. Cool. So now here's where we're going to deviate slightly from the old code. So we're going to create our capture object and it's going to be equal to cv2 dot video capture and we're just going to pass it zero. So I've got a Logitech webcam plugged into my system and since it's the only camera I can just pass zero and it'll show up as my default camera. If you've got multiple cameras plugged in then you might need to go with a different number but if you've only got one camera plugged in, then it's probably going to be zero. So that's going to be our capture device. And then next thing I'm going to do is change the height and width. So we're going to use the full 1080p frame size. So we'll do capture.set. It's going to be cv2.cap in all caps underscore prop underscore frame underscore width. And then the value is going to be 1920. Then we're going to do capture.set um, cv2.cap underscore prop underscore frame underscore height and the height's going to be 1080. 
cool. So now let's proceed to our while loop. So the while loop is going to look pretty much the same as before. So we'll do while true. And then we're going to create our start time, which we're just going to use for timing how long each frame takes. So it's just going to be time dot time. Next, we're going to do ret comma frame and we're going to be reading from our capture device. So we'll do capture dot read. So then we're going to do our prediction. So our prediction, we called it results and it's going to be TF net dot return re return predict and then we're going to pass it the frame. So then it'll return those results of what all those objects it detected. So next we're going to do if ret. So if the capture device is still going or recording, we're going to do our prediction or we're going to add our boxes to our frame. So now we're going to do our for loop where we loop over all our predictions. So to do that, it's going to be for color comma result in zip and the zip's going to be colors and the result. So just again, we're going to get one color for every result. Then we're going to pull out the top left coordinate and bottom right coordinate plus the label. And we're also going to add the confidence value. So what I'm going to do is copy all that stuff real quick. So here, the top left is just going to be the results. And then we pull out the top left X and the Y. Same for the bottom right, the X and Y values. The label is just going to be results. And we pull out the label. And then the confidence value is going to be results. Um, and then there's a key confidence. Cool. And then just to display this a little bit nicer, I'll create something called text. And it's going to be equal to a string we're going to format it. So the first thing is going to be the label. Then we will put a semicolon and then we're going to put a float. So what it's going to be is we're just going to do zero, zero decimals. And then we're going to format that. So the first one's going to be the label and the next one's going to be the confidence. And what we're going to do is just multiply it by a hundred. So that way we get a percentage and then I'll just put a percent sign here to remind us cool so that's going to be our that's going to be our label so now we're just going to add the rectangle and the text so again we're going to rename our frame and we're going to use cv2.rectangle so we're going to put a rectangle on the frame here's the coordinates of it the color will be the random color and the line width will be 5 then we're going to do the put text method. So in this case, we're going to put text. We're going to put text on the frame. The, the text is going to be text. We're going to put it in the top left. Here's our font. Here's our font size. Here's our font color. And here's our line width. Cool. So now we're going to come out of the for loop and we're going to do CB2. Dot M show and the title of the window is going to be called frame and what we're going to put in the frame is the frame itself. Finally, we'll do our print statement. So we're just going to print out the, the frames per second. So what that looks like, this is just copied from the previous code. So it's just going to be FPS and then we're going to format a float and it's going to be one divided by the frame time. So we're just going to take the current time minus the start time and divide that by one. And we just want one decimal place. Cool. And then finally we'll come out of the if statement and we're just going to add our boilerplate CV2 code. So the, the CV2 dot wait keys one and zero XFF equals ORD Q. We're going to break. So basically if we hit Q, we break out of the window. Finally, we just need to, um, we're just going to do capture dot release. So we release the, the capture device and then finally CV2 dot destroy, destroy all windows. Cool. So that should be it. So this should work. And you may have seen in the previous videos, I can't run this while my screen recording is running. So 
I'll have to stop the screen capture, start the model, and then pick back up. So I'm going to stop real quick and then pick back up in one second. And we're back. So here you can see the YOLO algorithm running in real time on the camera. And we've got it set to 1080p resolution. So pretty standard frame resolution. And just to give you an idea, we're running at about just under 20 frames per second. And it runs slightly slower when I'm doing the frame capture because it's using a little bit of GPU resources. But that's not too bad. 20 frames per second is acceptable. And if you need to get a little more speed, again, you can use the tiny YOLO model. That one runs about double, but it's trained on less objects. So it's going to be able to detect less objects. But anyways, the, the goal will be to hopefully we can get YOLO 9000 up and running soon. Uh, hopefully the weights are uploaded to the repo so we can use that one because that one's trained on to detect 9,000 objects or more than 9,000 objects. And it's supposed to be, like it says, better, faster, stronger, and all that. So hopefully we can use that one in the future. And yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. In the next one, I'm gonna try and do the, well, I'm gonna try and train the model to detect something else. So my goal will be, since here you can see, the fidget spinner, it's detecting it at as like a remote or scissors. I want to train the yellow model to detect fidget spinners, so I should be able to find lots of training data online. So that's going to be the goal of the next video. Obviously, it's just an example to show you how you would train it, train the model to detect any other object. So that's going to be the next one. Like always, if you guys have any questions, leave them below. Um, feel free, you guys know, or maybe you don't know, but I respond to all the comments. So feel free to contact me, ask any questions or discuss anything. And I'll go ahead and post this code to my GitHub so you can download it. And like always, if you like the video, leave a like. And if you really liked it, then hit the subscribe button so you can see more of this content in the future. And thanks guys, talk to you later, peace.